Alright everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the new MIDI output feature in Scratch Live version 2.5. Now what MIDI out allows is for the lights on your MIDI controller to light up and blink whenever you trigger functions in Scratch Live like the cue points or the loop controls or the SP6 sample players so, slots. Uh, for basic MIDI output lighting, there's really not much to it. You just need to simply MIDI map anything like you normally would in Scratch Live, and it should automatically output the control to your MIDI controller to start uh, lighting up and blinking or flashing depending on the function. So let's just take a basic example of this, and we'll click on MIDI at the top, and we'll map the in and out button and loop buttons over here on the left deck. So just click it, and then press the button on your MIDI controller, which, by the way, this is the new Mark Orbit. New MIDI controller just came out. Uh, it's a 16-pad uh, MIDI controller with four banks, so a total of 64 pads. Uh, but what's great about this is it has color RGB pads, so you can change the colors to pretty much uh, anything you want. We'll get into that in just a little bit later. So uh, we map the in button, and you'll notice down here at the bottom in the green box it says MIDI output lighting on. Press L to toggle off. So if you want to disable MIDI output lighting for whatever reason, just press your L key when you have this green box right here. But I don't see why you would because uh, everyone's been dying for MIDI output lighting for their controllers in Scratch Live. Anyway, moving on. Now let's map the out button over here. We'll map it to this button right here. And we'll map the loop button over. Well, we'll do it to this guy over here. All right. So now that we have these functions MIDI map, let's go ahead and test them out and see if the lights on the new Mark Orbit light up. So let's play the track. And we'll press the in button right here. And there you go. You see that the button lights up. And we'll press the out button next now, and you'll see that it lights up as well, as well as the loop button over here. And you'll notice that the in and out buttons are flashing just like they are on the left deck here in Scratch Live, uh, indicating that you're in a loop and uh, you have in and out points set. And that's all there really is to it for just the basic simple MIDI output lighting. Let's just exit out of this. And you'll notice the in and out is still lit on the MIDI controller because these buttons are still lit as well. To get rid of it, just click the X button or you can MIDI map that as well. All right, so that's pretty much it for basic MIDI output lighting. If you want to get more advanced functions, like if you have a colored controller like the new Mark Orbit that has different color pads, are you going to have to do a little manual editing and hacking of your XML file located in your Serato folder and the MIDI folder in there? I will get into that more advanced uh, looking at the XML file in just a bit. Uh, but some of the functions that you can do uh, with the advanced editing is getting the... Uh, lights on your MIDI controller to light up when you have cue points set. So we'll take a look at that right now. Let me switch banks and we'll load this song right here. And there you go. As you can see the new Mark Orbit right here. Uh, RGB pad so I can get a, uh, pretty much a rainbow of colors to anything I want. Uh, how these are indicating the cue points for this uh, track on the left deck right here. I have cue points set in all five slots and you'll notice that the colors correspond to the actual uh, cue points. So the first one is red. Uh, second one is yellow, third one is green, fourth one is light blue, and the fifth one is dark blue. And you also notice when I press it, I don't know if you can see it very well, uh, it highlights, uh, lights up even faster, so it's kind of dim just for when the cue points are set. When you press it, it uh, lights up a brighter color. And also uh, I have this functionality for a shift button right here, so if I hold that down, that's basically a shift, and you can go ahead and delete the cue points like that. Uh, or if you want to set them, you know, just hit the buttons like that again. And there you go, that will uh, set more cue points like that. Now, in order to get this kind of functionality, you're going to have to manually edit your XML file. Uh, like I said, if you have a RGB um, MIDI controller or a controller with different colored lights, you're going to have to do some manual editing, and we're going to take a look at that next. But for the basic MIDI output lighting, uh, really not much to it, just MIDI map anything like you normally would. And for now, we're going to move over and take a look at editing and hacking your XML file to get the more advanced functions like the colored pads and the cue points to light up. Alright, now for a more advanced MIDI output functionality, you're going to have to manually edit your XML file yourself to your liking to set up the more advanced functions like getting the cue points to light up or changing the color of the buttons on your MIDI controller if it supports it. Now before we get into that though, you're going to need to download a little program uh, to manually edit the XML files. You can use uh, the text edit program, the basic one that's built into a Mac. However, I recommend using this program right here called Text Wrangler. Uh, so just do a Google search for this program right here, Text Wrangler. That'll be right here, Bareborn Software, Text Wrangler. Or you can also use its bigger brother, BB Edit. That's a more uh, uh, extensive uh, HTML and text editor and whatnot. But Text Wrangler is free, BB Edit is not, but uh, we can use Text Wrangler for this. So go ahead and download that program first of all. 
And once you get that installed, next we're going to have to open the XML file. So go into your internal drive, go into your music folder, into your Serato folder, and then in your MIDI folder right here, you should have your mapping file right here. And you're also going to have an autosave XML file as well. This is basically just a... Anytime you add, you MIDI map something new, it gets added to this autosave one, just in case you forget to save it. Uh, but this is the actual one right here for my new Mark Orbit right here. Uh, so let's just right click and open it with Text Wrangler. All right. So this is what your uh, XML file basically looks like. You have basically a list of every command that you have MIDI mapped already in Scratch Live. And for the most part, it's pretty obvious what each one says right here. Uh, this Red Hammer one, we'll get into a minute. That is how you get the cue points to light up. Uh, but for anything else, you'll see like Auto Loop Select knob. That's the knob to turn the value uh, for the Auto Loop links. The uh, Loop Row buttons, Auto Loop, uh, and then the individual links. So you have like 4, 8, uh, 16, Sample Player 1 button. So uh, they're pretty obvious what each button does. But you don't set the... Beginning though, it says control. Anyone that says control at the beginning, that's the actual MIDI input, so that's when you're triggering the function. Everything on the output will be towards the bottom. So you, when you start seeing output, this is when uh, this is where the values that it outputs to uh, for your MIDI controller to light up. So uh, the common one a lot of people are going to want to do is getting the cue points to light up. Now, in order to do that, uh, you're going to have to use the red hammer hack basically. And I've already done a video on this a uh, couple years ago. By now, actually. God, has it been that long? Uh, but anyway, so yes, uh, it's called the Red Hammer Hack. I don't know, I'm not sure exactly why, but basically this is the only way you can get it. Well, I wouldn't say the only way, uh, but this is the easier way to get the cue points to light up on your MIDI controller when you have cue point sets. And then when you set a cue point, the uh, light will stay on for you on your MIDI controller. Uh, so when you load the track again, you know, the next time, uh, boom, the lights will automatically light up on your MIDI controller, indicating that you have a cue point set on that slot. Uh, so basically, you're going to want to manually add these uh, lines right here. So uh, I'm going to post all this information on a thread on the Serato forum uh, that uh, you know you can go ahead and reference in the future. But for now, uh, you're going to want to just add this line, uh, Control A, Red Hammer, uh, Q.18. And then the next is Channel. Channel is going to be what MIDI channel that uh, button is sending out on your controller. Uh, MIDI channels can vary in range from 1 to 16. Okay, so again, this is where you're going to have to do a little investigating with your MIDI controller. Um, you know, this is going to vary from controller to controller, so uh, reference the manual if it comes with it or any online uh, guides or anything like that. So channel is the MIDI channel. It's going to be one in this particular case. Uh, event type is note on. And control right here, this number right here is going to be the note value that the button sends out uh, when you press it. So again, this is where you're going to need some type of reference in your manual uh, as to what note value your MIDI controller sends out when you press that particular button. So you're going to want to change this value to uh, whatever button or whatever note that particular button on your MIDI controller sends out. And then you just repeat it again now. So uh, Red Hammer Q point uh, 2A and then 3A, 4A and 5A and then now so I have for the other side. Uh, A is going to be for the left deck, B is going to be for the right deck. So anything that says Q.1A, that's the first Q point on the left deck. Uh, Q.1B is the first Q point on the right deck, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then you also notice that uh, the MIDI channel is just probably going to be the same uh, in, my, in most cases. Uh, note on is always going to be the case right here. So that's saying uh, note on, that's when you press your MIDI button down, that it turns the note on. And the control, again, this is the note value that the button sends out when you press it. And again, that's going to vary from controller to controller, or uh, most good MIDI controllers have some type of uh, MIDI editor that you can change these values to what it sends out. Uh, so you're just going to have to go through and manually add these parts right here. Now that's just for the input part. Now the more trickier part is the output. Uh, you're going to want to add, let's go down here, uh, starting with this one right here, output, name, Q.1A. And then this part right here, I'm going to highlight it. Now the first part says on, channel 1. So again, that's MIDI channel 1. Event type, note on. Control, that's going to be the button again. So right here, so that particular button sends out a value of 0. And then the value. Uh, this is going to be the um, MIDI output value that it sends out. Now in the case of the Newmark Orbit, um, Every value from 1 to 27, that's going to be the available uh, values that you can select is 1 to 27. 
on the Newmark Orbit, every single value from 1 to 27 sends out a different color. And this is where if you have an RGB color pad or at least a controller with a different couple colors like red, green, or yellow, uh, kind of like the Novation Launchpad or something like that, uh, this is what you're going to want to add right here. This is where you're going to put your color in, basically. Uh, so you want to, again, this is where you need to reference your manual or do a little investigating to figure out what color that that particular note value sends out. Okay. So in this particular case for that Newmark Orbit, a value of 112 is red. And that's why the button lights up red right there. Okay. And then the X next part is off. Uh, channel 1 again. Uh, event type note on. Now normally this is going to be off. This is where you're going to have to change it to on right here. That will normally say off like that because obviously it's an off output. However, we don't want that because we want the uh, the button on your MIDI controller to still stay lit even uh, you know when there's a cue point there. If that is off, then the cue point is uh, going to go off after you trigger it. So you're going to want to change that to on. And again, uh, same thing over here, control equals zero. That's going to be the note value. And then the value right here, again, is that particular color or value or whatever you want that that button sends out. So if it's a different color, again, you know, you don't want to change that value to uh, something else. And uh, that's pretty much it for the cue points. Uh, you just got to repeat this process now for each and every one. So output name, cue point 2A, uh, cue point 3A. Q point four A and five A, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and then for the uh, that's for the left side, and then for the right side it'll be Q point one B, all right here, and then two B, three B, four B, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, all right. So that is for getting the Q points to um, light up on your MIDI controller when you have them set. Again, I'll have all this information posted in a kind of a little mini guide. I'm going to post on the Serato forums, and I'll put a link to it down in the. Uh, about section or the uh, you know the video description. Okay, another thing you might want to do along the same lines is uh, you know if you're using the SP6 sample player, uh, you're gonna want the uh, you know you want the buttons to light up too whenever you have samples set in a slot. So again, you want to search down or scroll down and search for this output name sample player one and then two, three, four, five. That's for all uh, the slots. Uh, same thing though uh, on. Okay, so this is going to be telling you know when you press your button. Okay, it's going to light up, okay? So in this particular instance, I have it on a different MIDI channel of 3. Uh, the event type, uh, it's going to be note on again. All right, control equals 0. That's the, uh, the value of the button when you press it down. And then the actual value right here, again, uh, in terms of the Newmark Orbit, this is the color that the button uh, will send out. So if I want to, 127 is white. If I want to change it to um, red, I would change that to, oops, uh, I will change it to what is red. It was 80, I think. Okay, so I change that to 80, and then instead of outputting white on the new Mark Orbit, it will output to red. Okay, and then for the off again, you're going to want to change this. It'll say note off, but we don't want that. We want it to be on even uh, when you're not pressing it because we want it to still kind of light up on your MIDI controller, uh, indicating that uh, you have a uh, a sample loaded to that slot, so we're going to change it from off to on again, okay? And then the same thing right here, change the value if you want to change it to a different color or whatever. Uh, so I'll change it to 12, which is uh, light red. So 80 is like the dark red, uh, 12 is the light red. So uh, that means, um, you know, when I load a track, it'll load to this light red color, which is value 12, and then when I press the button down, it'll turn to dark red, which is going to be value 80 right here. All right, so that is some of the more advanced MIDI hacking of the MIDI output functionality in Scratch Live version 2.5. I uh, hope I didn't confuse you too much, but it's not too bad once you actually figure out the values of your controller. Then it's just a matter of just changing the numbers right here uh, for the most part, and that's uh, pretty simple. But the hard part is, uh, at least in terms of the Newmark Orbit, because it didn't come with any type of uh, description of what color that each value sends out, so I had to go through and all 127 values to figure out all the different colors. So if you have a new Mark Orbit 2, I'll be more than happy to share the colors, uh, the values for the colors. If you want, just send me a message. Uh, but other than that, there you go. That is my look at the new MIDI output functionality in Scratch Live version 2.5. Again, for basic functionality, there's not much to it. Just map anything like you normally would. But if you want more advanced functionality, you're going to have to manually edit your XML file here, uh, located in your uh, underscore Serato underscore folder. Uh, go in there, check in your MIDI folder, and you'll have your 
uh, XML files right here. Oh, another important note though is whenever you make changes to your main XML file, uh, one, don't forget to save it. All right, and then you're going to need to delete the auto save XML file right here. Otherwise, it's not going to work right. So the next time you load up Scratch Live now, you're going to have to go back into the MIDI uh, tab page in the setup menu and just reload your um, XML file right here. And when you do that, it's going to create a new uh, auto save XML file. Uh, but again, if, if you go back and change the main one again, don't forget you always have to go back and delete that auto save one. Otherwise, it's not going to work right. So. Uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on using the MIDI output feature new in Scratch Live version 2.5, uh, both the basic version and the advanced version.